Let's get some business news for you now. Kate Moody is here. Uh, bad news uh, for people hoping to travel tomorrow because France is going up for another day of strikes. Absolutely. That's when the cabinet ministers uh, are going to be again examining those controversial reform uh, proposals to overhaul the pension system. The proposals have sparked rolling protests since the 5th of December. Now, while public transport in Paris and across the country had largely returned to normal this week, unions are continuing to blockade seaports and docks. It's causing major disruption to businesses, as Catherine Viette reports. The normally bustling Marseille port at a standstill, nothing coming in or going out. Striking dock workers call the blockade of France's seaports Operation Deadport, and it's taking a toll. Over the past month, this fruit exporter has had to pay more to retrieve its containers from other European ports. We can lose up to 100,000 euros a week. These are very strict contracts with people who need to deliver because they're in manufacturing. What do we say? What do we do? We don't have the solution. The same dilemma for this trucking company. That truck is heading to Burgundy. Impossible to unload the truck in Marseille. The company says it's lost 132,000 euros in profits. It ships French wine across the world. Since the beginning of December, the cases sit in the warehouse, going nowhere. The head of the CGT union says this is the only way to get the government's attention. Employers must realize it will not stop, will continue. Of course we're aware of the economic impact they're measuring, but we have no other choice but to try to be heard. The Marseille Chamber of Commerce says the economic impact from the blockade amounts to a loss of 100 million euros for the month of December. It's destroying employment on a huge scale, and not just for today's employment, but for the future. I'm appealing to those leading the strikes to do what you did in the past, if you wish, but keep it to just one shift a day. The Chamber of Commerce has opened a crisis center for those businesses affected by the strikes. It's also issued a warning that it could take several years to rebuild lost trust and goodwill. Well, the French finance minister has defended his country's aggressive stance on taxing digital giants, which almost sparked a trade war with the U.S. Bruno Le Maire, Steve Mnuchin and OECD head Angel Gurria met again in Davos on Thursday, agreeing on a framework for international talks on the issue. Among other points was an agreement to link the possibility of a minimum corporate tax rate to that tax on tech giants. Washington has backed off its threat to impose tariffs on French imports, in exchange for the French government's holding off on collecting the so-called GAFA tax as those broader negotiations continue. Well, the head of government agency Business France told France 24 that investors around the world are now ready for the tax system to be updated. We need to reinvent uh, frameworks for taxes into the 21st centuries. When you've got a free flux of goods which are immaterials, and that's the base on which you tax your goods is different, we need to rethink the way we do this. And that's re-happening right now. So I think uh, it's not an issue in the business relations. No, the investors are thinking about the long time. They're talking about whether or not they can have the right infrastructure, which France have definitely, and have been paid for by two or three decades of, uh, of contributions and tax. They talk about the ability to access to talent, and here we've got a lot of good elements to talk to them about. They're talking also about the overall environment and the business friendliness of the country. Pascal Cagny speaking to our business editor Stephen Carroll in Davos, uh, also saying that those ongoing strikes don't seem to have impacted companies' interest in setting up here in France. The European Central Bank is to examine its own role in combating climate change as part of a strategic review of the way it does business. The new ECB chief, Christine Lagarde, said that climate change is a threat to financial stability, suggesting that, among other proposals, she would consider increasing the bank's green investments. The Central Bank kept its policy rates unchanged, but warned that the Eurozone economy remains at risk. The risks surrounding the Euro area growth outlook <laughs> related to geopolitical factors, rising protectionism, and vulnerabilities in emerging markets remain tilted to the downside, but have become less pronounced as some of the uncertainty surrounding international trade is receding. Let's check in on the day's trading action now. The major European indices followed Asia's negative trend as investors start to worry about the possible spread of that coronavirus from China. Uh, the DAX was down nearly 1% in Frankfurt. London's FTSE 100 not far behind. Cacquant down about two-thirds of a percentage point. Shares of carmaker Renault dropped 5% in Paris. 
Wall Street has pared back some of its earlier steeper gains. We've seen the Nasdaq and S&P 500 both climb just above the flat line there. Shares of Comcast are down about 3.5%, despite better than expected quarterly earnings. Sydney has been blanketed in thick, toxic smoke on and off for the past few months as bushfires ravage Australia's southeast. Shutdowns and disruptions caused by the smoke haze are having a significant economic impact on Australia's most populous city, which represents one quarter of the country's GDP. Michelle Harrison Pless and Gregory Pless report from Sydney. Sydney in January usually looks like this. But over the past few months, some days, the city has been choking on toxic smoke due to devastating bushfires burning in the country's southeast. The smog isn't just a health hazard. Economists say it's costing the city dearly, up to 31 million euros per day. The air quality in Sydney's been bad enough to affect people's behaviour. So people aren't um, going out to enjoy meals, they're not going to shops and spending as much. Um, they're being impacted by poor health and missing work. Sydney is renowned for its outdoor lifestyle. Although it's the height of summer, breezy beer gardens and restaurants offering alfresco dining are pulling in smaller crowds. You get too tired to go out for drinks at the end of the week because it's just, um, you know, it's very smoky, you just want to go home. There are people who aren't coming into work every day um, because they're looking after their properties and you know, fortunately the company that I work for can afford to support those sort of people. Um, but there's a lot of small business owners that are, you know, if their staff aren't turning up then they're really struggling. Besides the short-term economic impact, Sydney's global brand has taken a hit and the consequences could be felt down the line. As images of the harbour city shrouded in smoke are beamed around the world, its tourism industry is suffering. The lucrative Chinese market in particular has been dealt a heavy blow. Normally this is our very busy season, but now you can see that it's quiet. There's no tourists coming. Many, many of the tourists, they already booked the trip to Australia, they just cancel it. The, the iconic images to, to the Chinese tourists will be the fresh air, the good environment. This is the, the attractions that Australia give to the Chinese tourists. But now, the bushfire is just like ruined everything. According to Australian tourism authorities, the slump is set to cost at least 2.8 billion euros by the end of the year. A lot at stake, Laura, uh, for the economy and, of course, for the environment as well. Absolutely. Kate, thank you very much indeed. That's it for the business. Stay with us. More news still to come.